All right, so we ended part one of our section 6.2 video by talking about how we are going to change a quadratic function from its standard form or general form to vertex form. And the way that we do that is by completing the square, which you learned in our previous unit. So let's take this quadratic function, f of x equals x squared plus 3x plus 1, and let's write that in vertex form by completing the square. Now, in our previous chapter, what we did was actually subtract the 1, and we moved it over here on the left-hand side. We can still do it that way. It just adds an extra step. So I'm going to show you how we would do it both ways, by moving the 1 or just by bumping the one over. So I will show you both ways and you can choose which way you prefer. So by bumping it over, what we're gonna do is take x squared plus three x plus, and then leave our space for completing the square. We'll put all that parentheses and bump over our plus one over here. If we were going to move the one, we would have zero equals x squared plus three x plus one, and we would subtract one from both sides. So we would get negative one equals x squared plus three x, and then we would leave space to complete the square. Now remember when completing the square, we take half of our b term and we square it. So half of three is three halves, and three halves squared is just three halves times three halves, Remember that when multiplying fractions, you multiply across the top and you multiply across the bottom. So 3 halves squared is the same thing as 3 halves times 3 halves, which is the same thing as 9 fourths. So we've added 9 fourths here. Now, we can't just add 9 fourths to one side. Um, we've got to keep things balanced. So if all you did was bump over the 1, you're going to put a 9 fourths on the inside and a negative nine-fourths on the outside. Okay? Those will eventually cancel each, other's out, each other out and it will keep our equation balanced. If you did the method where you move the negative one over and you add nine-fourths, then you're going to add nine-fourths to the one side and whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. You have to keep the equation balanced. So we're gonna add nine-fourths over here to the left side with our negative one. Okay, we are then going to simplify that by changing our 1 to 4 fourths and combining our 4 fourths and our 9 fourths. Okay, if you did the first method where you just bumped the 1 outside the parentheses, uh, 4 fourths minus 9 fourths is negative 5 fourths. We're keeping this equation balanced. And if you did the secondary method that I'm writing over here on the right, uh, 9 fourths minus 5, 1, 4 fourths is a positive 5 fourths equals x squared plus 3x plus 9 fourths. Now, you'll see that where we bumped the 1 over outside the parentheses, we are now done. Our equation is in vertex form. We've got our h value here, negative 3 halves, and we've got our k value here, negative 5 fourths. On the method where we moved the 1, we've got one more step. We need to get this 5 fourths back over here on this side. So we are going to factor our x squared plus 3x plus 9 fourths. x squared plus 9 fourths. Oops, x plus 9 fourths. Put that in parentheses. Man, I am struggling here this morning. It is not x plus 9 fourths. We're going to take the squares of those. It's going to be x plus 3 halves in parentheses and our squared symbol out here. That was a perfect square trinomial that we made. Now, once we have factored our quadratic here, now we can subtract 5 fourths from both sides. And so we have that our y equals, our f of x basically equals x plus 3 halves squared minus 5 fourths. So you now can see that these look the same. Okay, the, the version on the right is a few more steps. It's not the version that I prefer. But for those of you who are struggling with this idea of just bumping the one and adding the opposite outside the parentheses to keep it balanced, then this method on the right might be better for you for right now. Remember that our x plus 3 halves squared comes from the fact that when we factor this, 
that's a perfect square trinomial, and we factor it to x plus 3 halves squared. We will do a lot of work with completing the square. Even though you've been introduced to it, we now need to put that into practice so we can find the vertex. Our vertex then is negative 3 halves and negative 5 fourths. Our parabola is going to open upward because our a value, the value outside the parentheses, is just a positive 1. And it's going to have the same shape as x squared because our a value is not greater than 1 or less than 1. Let's put f of x equals negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 1. Uh, it's in general form. We want to put it into vertex form. Let's change that here. Then we want to graph and state its vertex and axis of symmetry. All right, so we're going to do this time the, the method where we bump the 1. So we're going to bump the 1 outside the parentheses. And we're going to add an extra step here. So we have 3x squared plus 6x. And then leave space for completing the square and bump our 1 outside. I see that my a and my b term have a common factor. So in the next step, I'm going to factor out that negative 3. Remember that in order to complete the square, my x squared term has to have a coefficient of 1 right here. So we need to factor out that 3. And we get f of x equals negative 3 times x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now we will go ahead and complete the square. We're going to take half of 2 and square it. Well, half of 2 is 2 divided by 2. That's just 1. And then we are going to square it. And 1 times 1 equals 1. So we're adding a positive 1 right here. But we need to add something outside to keep our equation balanced. Now, before you just write a negative one to balance out that positive one, don't forget that there's something outside this parentheses that that one is being multiplied by. That one is actually being multiplied by negative three. Negative three times one is actually negative three. So what we really added to our equation is negative three. Well, what would counterbalance our negative three? Hopefully you said a positive three. So we have f of x equals negative, and then we're going to factor our perfect square trinomial, x minus 1 squared, and then we're going to combine these numbers on the outside to keep our equation balanced. Positive 1 minus negative 3, or positive 1 plus 3 equals 4. We now have put our function into vertex form. We can now state the vertex as 1, 4. We know the axis of symmetry is x equals 1. We know that our graph is opening downward because there's a negative number, and we know that our graph is going to be steeper than the parent function because our a is greater than 1. So vertex is 1, 4. Our axis is x equals 1. We didn't actually graph it, but let's try that really quickly. We know that our parent function looks something like this. Okay, and our vertex, though, now is at 1, 4. So moving over 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4. There's our vertex. And we know that it's opening downward because of a negative number, and it's going to be steeper. So it may look something like this. We could plug in specific x values if we wanted to get specific coordinates to graph that. Given f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k, formulas for h and k can be found. Here we can find our h by taking b over negative 2a, or negative b over 2a. And we can find our k by using c minus b squared over 4a. It's often easier to find the value of k by substituting the value of h into f of x. So we can find, use these formulas to find h and k. So let's take this example. f of x equals negative x squared minus 2x plus 1. We know our a is negative 1, our b is negative 2, and our c is 1. We're going to find our h and k this time not by completing the square, but by using these formulas for h and k. H is just negative B over 2A. This should look very familiar as part of the quadratic formula. 
So negative b over 2a, we'll plug in what we know. We get negative 2 over 2 times negative 1. When we simplify that, our h is negative 1. And we can find our k by just plugging in the negative 1 for f of x, plug and chug. So when we plug in that negative 1 and simplify, we get that our k is equal to 2. So we found our vertex not using vertex form, but by using this formula for h and then plugging and chugging to find k. The maximum point, uh, we know that it's opening downwards, so we're going to have a maximum point. Our maximum point is at the vertex negative 1, 2. So there are two different methods where you can find the vertex, vertex form or the formulas for h and k. Our axis of symmetry will be at x equals negative 1, and it will have the same shape as the parent function because our a is equal to a value of 1. All right, today in our two videos, we graphed quadratic functions of the form f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k by transforming the parent functions f of x equals x squared. We found the vertex, we found the axis of symmetry, we determined whether a graph was opening upward or downward, and whether it was steeper or wider than the parent function. We also found an alternate way to find h and k other than by completing the square using the formula h equals negative b over 2a. And then once we found h, plugging it into the parent or plugging it into the original function to find our k. So we found two different ways that we could find the vertex. Make sure that you write down any questions you have, and I will see you guys next class.